What's up guys and welcome to the sixth tutorial in my uh, stress testing tutorial series. So in the previous tutorial we uh, started looking into Apache JMeter and how it works. And uh, now we're going to continue with a little bit more advanced scenario. And um, just a recap, you can define like variables in your uh, application right here, for example the base URL, so you can easily switch out which API you're running against. And also one really important thing is that whatever you order you put stuff in, in here, in the side, uh, it's going to be run in that order. So as you can see I have the HTTP version and the HTTP ping that I used in the, in the previous tutorial. If you right click here you can enable and disable them. So what I did, I right click and I disable those two. So what I'm gonna do in this next tutorial is, uh, let me start by showing how my application works. And uh, Laravel, it's super easy to group different uh, routes by authentication in order to authorize stuff. And the way it works here <clears throat> is that everyone can any, everyone and anyone can use the ping endpoint because it's not specified in a group. And also the same goes for the login, point, uh, login endpoint because obviously anyone should be able to log in without being logged in, you know. And after that we have a, a, a group here uh, which uh, I called authentication which means that in order to use anything in here you need to be logged in. And also I have this group right here, which runs a authorized middleware, which means that you have to be a customer service uh, role in order to use these endpoints right here. So for example, the API customer service slash client. And this endpoint will return all the clients for this customer service dude that's logged in, you know. So it's not gonna work unless you log in. And the login works uh, like this. You, you start by hitting the endpoint. And in my application, you need to set the content type to application slash JSON because that's what I use for sending data. And uh, this is the body that I post. I post the username, which is the email, and the password, which is abc123. And whenever I post this, I get a, and, and the credential is right, obviously. I get this back, some user data, the username and the title and description and uh, whatnot. And the interesting thing is this, this is the token. So if I if I copy this, or you know what, if, if I try to access, if I try to access this endpoint, uh, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be available to me. Actually, let me change that to the proper IP address. And it's port 8080. So this is, I'm, I'm not authorized to see this endpoint without being a customer service. So in order to authorize and authenticate myself, I need to copy this token right here. And I need to set the header called authorization. And I need to paste it in there. And now I should be able to get my clients back. So that's the basic procedure. It's not rocket science. This is usually how you do stuff, you know. And um, if I remove this again, you can see that, or if I put something, something else in here, also I shouldn't be authenticated, you know, unauthorized. So this makes it a little bit harder to test for scenarios like what happens if 200 customer service user, uh, they log in and check their clients. What's going to happen to the system when, when, when that happens? And this is where, uh, this is the part that I mentioned in, in the introductory about uh, sessions. And this is where JMeter is super good. So I can create this whole scenario in my thread group that I have here. And I can just specify how many users I want, if I want 100 users to do this. I'm, I'm going to start with one user because it makes it easier in the beginning. And the first thing that I need to do is that I need to set the content, uh, the, the head, uh, HTTP header content type uh, to the value application slash JSON because that's what I use in my application. So in order to do this, I right click on my thread group and I go into config elements 
and I go to HTTP, uh, HTTP header manager and you can see I get the exact same thing. I'm gonna get, delete this because I already have it. And I just like, I just like add, click add here and then I type content type and yeah, whatever value. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this, so remove. Yes, I wanna remove it. So after this, the content type is set to application JSON, and then these two are disabled, so they're not gonna be run. And then I'm gonna do the login that I showed you before. And um, I use my base URL, and this is the URL that I hit when I uh, log in. I also need to set it to a post, and click body data here and specify my credentials, you know. And you can of course also put these in, in, uh, in variables if you like. I just hard coded them for now. And I also have added this results tree, uh, which is kind of nice because then you can see if you made any errors. So if I clear everything out and run it again, you can see that I get my HTTP requests in here. So if something should go wrong, you can just click here and then you can tab between them and see what you actually post. Did you post the right thing? Was it proper JSON that you posted? What was the response from the server? So as you can see here, I have the token available to me. So what I need to do, I need to, I need to grab this token and put it in, in the header for the next HTTP request. And I'm also going to grab the user ID because I think I'm going to use it in other kind of requests. So this is generally what you want to grab, you know, you can grab whatever you like in here. So I created this regular expression extractor. There are other, uh, I mean, regex for JSON is not the best way to go, but it, it works. And I, have, I haven't had that much success with the... Um, with other uh, like stuff that I tried out and this one worked for me. So this is a regular expression extractor right here. So, so what you wanna do is, I'm gonna delete this because I already have it. So remove. So when I, when I supposed to, at this point, I, I have the JSON response available to me because it's a part of the HTTP login. So the first thing I specify here is a variable name, which is gonna be called token. And down here, I specify the regex that I'm gonna use for grabbing it from the response body. So in here, you need to, here you put whatever the variable name was and then the regex expression that should be matched. And this is the template. So for example, let's say that you have many matches from this. You can use the two, three, four, but it's in my case, it's gonna be the first match. So I'm gonna use a one there. And if you don't find, if, if no one is matching, you can put a default value. I'm gonna put not found here because then I know if, then I can look in the next request and see if I find, find this text string and then I know I failed. And also the exact same thing goes for the user ID. Uh, I just call it user ID here. There's no difference. I put a comma in here because you can see if you look in the response right here, it wouldn't work if I would put a comma because there is no comma down here. But after the user ID, there's comma right here. So that's why I use comma for it. But I mean, I could probably remove it also. It doesn't really matter. And I don't know, you can put something else there if you like this and uh, the next thing that's gonna happen is that whenever this is run uh, these variables are assumed to be like available to to you in the next one so if I close this down you can see that app the HTTP login is done and all the grabbing of tokens and user ID is done they should be available to you like variables in the next one so in here I do the exact same thing as I did in Postman previously so I set the authorization header and I'm gonna use the variable token. And the name here, token, it comes from whatever you specify in the reference name here. So mine was called token. And at this point, the authorization should, should, be, should be set. So the last thing you need to do is, is 
making the next request of uh, that required authentication so you just add your request in here and then you just like like a regular HTTP request so this is why it's important that is they are in the right order because if I would try to run this HTTP request before the login it wouldn't work because then I wouldn't be authenticated so let's have a look <clears throat> at how it works clear everything out and run it well actually I didn't clear it let's try that again there we go so as you can see I managed to get my clients in here uh, which was kind of nice and if we also look in here in the uh, login uh, you can see that I got my token and everything everything was fine and what's interesting is if you if you take a look at this and scroll down here on the HTTP request or maybe it's better if you look in this tab actually uh, you can see that here my authorization header was set if it was sa saying something like not found uh, then it means that this regex didn't match so for example that's why you have the default value down here because if it doesn't match you can see down here that there would be the default value instead which is uh, really helpful uh, for you to debug so um, in order to just verify that that this works let me go ahead and disable the login so I right click here and I disable it like this and if I go down here and just like clear everything out you try to run it again now it shouldn't work because now I'm not authorized so if I click this you can see that uh, now I get like the token in here which because it, it couldn't find even the variables we thought it was an actual value and also I got the unauthorized pack so you need to do, do the login at first so let's try it again and make sure that it works all right so it works the nice thing about this is that whenever you have this kind of scenario set up for you it's the scaling is so simple the only thing you need to do is like put a hundred in here now a hundred users of the type uh, customer service in my uh, in my application is going to do the exact same thing in here so they're gonna they're gonna go ahead and log in and check their clients so let's see what happens when a hundred users does that so well it uh, it didn't work for some reason maybe something was wrong in here or token didn't match or something yes and this is actually a pretty pretty interesting um, scenario that happens because you can see that the login actually works and if I click in between them you can see that it's the same user that logs in but a user cannot have more than one session open at a time so whenever the next user comes along <clears throat> it's trying to use uh, the wrong token so that's why it's not uh, authenticated well actually the last one is because that used the uh, the proper token that was last collected because there is only one user uh, there is only one token per user basically so I would say that it's kind of a feature and there is a workaround to this and uh, I'm gonna show you how you can do that in the uh, in the next tutorial so thank you guys for watching I hope you enjoyed it and uh, don't forget to subscribe and put a comment in there if there's something that you're wondering about so yeah thanks thanks you guys for watching and see you in the next tutorial